Well, praise the Lord. First, I want to welcome you all to New Creation Outreach Ministries. We are so glad that you have chose to stop by our website and, and click on this message that I believe is timely. I believe that God has a word for each and every one of us for such a time as this. Many of you are aware that the president has declared a national state of emergency in the midst of what is known as the coronavirus pandemic, pandemic, excuse me. But I wanna say right now, and I wanna take an opportunity right now to declare and decree that God is still on the throne. God is still worthy of all of the praise, honor, and glory. He is still keeping his children. He is still protecting us and guiding us. And if you believe that today, just take a few seconds to just give God some praise because he is worthy. And I, I'm just reminded of Isaiah in the 40 chapter. It says, have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, creator of the ends of the earth fainted not neither is he weary there is no searching of his understanding for he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases their strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall walk they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I thank the Lord that I know him. I know him as Jehovah Jireh, our provider. I know him as Jehovah Nisi, our covering. I know him to be Jehovah Shalom, our peace in such a time as this. My sisters and brothers, we are in the right place at the right time because God is here. Hallelujah. So right now, I just pray, Father God, for your hand of continuous protection over your people. I pray that we would continue to experience the peace that you have promised us in your word. I ask, Father God, that you would continue to provide the needs that we have right now. It may look and it may appear that there is lack, but those who are in Christ have abundance. I thank you right now, Father God, that you're Jehovah Rapha, our healer, and I thank you for the healing that you have already provided for us. And so we receive it now. Open our ears that we may hear and our hearts that we may receive. Let your word go forth with power and conviction to destroy and break every yoke that tries to hinder your children from moving forward. We thank you that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. God, we give you the glory today. We love you today. We thank you that you're still on the throne and still in control today. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. My scripture text this morning will come from the 91st Psalms. And many of us know that that is the promise of God's protection. Oh, how timely this message is. I just want to, for the sake of time, I want to just focus in on Psalms 91 and 2 when it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. I want you to make that personal. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. This is what we need to say. I want to use as a thought today, when the storms of life, come in your life when the storms come in your life what will you say because what you say matters there will be some disappointments my sisters and brothers right now we're we're in a day and time where there are some storms that's so heavy that the waves of pain and despair are hitting us so hard as coming into our spirits, causing us symptoms of sickness and dis-ease in our bodies. There's the storm of life that's, that's hitting us on every side. It may not necessarily be in your house, but it might be in your child's house. It might be in your loved one's home. It may be in your loved one's boat. But today I want you to understand what you say matters. And so we're going to look at, at three things today that's going to help you 
have a victorious outcome in the midst of a storm. And those three things are, first, I want to encourage you, my sisters and brothers, don't focus on how it looks. Second, I want you to understand that if you are in Christ, if you have accepted him as your Lord and your Savior and you have a relationship with him, then I don't want you to respond like an unbeliever. And then lastly, I want you to understand that the victory is in your mouth. Yes, it matters what you say in times like this. So the Bible is filled with, with accounts of people who came face to face with what looked like impossible situations. And if we look at it right now in the natural, it looks like we're in an impossible situation. But I want to encourage you, my sisters and brothers, it's not about what it looks like in the natural. It's what it looks like in the spiritual. And in the spiritual, we are victorious, and we just need to know that today. So I want to draw your attention to a very familiar passage of scripture found in Mark 4, the 35th through the 37th verse. The first part of it says, in this particular passage, it says, and the same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had set up, and when they sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. It says a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into their ship so that it was full. I want you to understand, my sisters and brothers, here are God's disciples, God's followers. And they walk with Jesus. They were connected with him, but they... They had a promise, but what happens when you focus on what's going on around you? You forget the promise. We saw that with Adam and Eve in Genesis, how God had given them a promise, and, and he gave them some direction and instruction. But when they started looking at it was good for the eyes and it was pleasant, and they started focusing their attention on the natural things, they, they lost hold of the promise. And so today I want you to understand the first point I want you to get in this whole scenario is don't lose sight of the promise. Don't focus on what it looks like, my sisters and brothers. And so somebody may say, well, what, what is the promise in this particular passage? Oh, I'm glad you asked because the promise here says, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. And when he said, let us go to the other side, he didn't say there wasn't going to be some storms because the storms will come in life. But you have to understand when the word of God says something, it will come to pass. Jesus made them a promise. He told them that we're going to the other side. All they had to do was hold on to what was said. All they had to do was hold on to the promises that God had given them. Listen, it's one thing to just ignore. I'm not saying ignore what's going on around us. That's why we're not having a live service. We understand what's going on around us, but how we respond in the midst of what's going on around us is everything. What you say matters. And so uh, we find here that as a result of them focusing on what was going on, as a result of them focusing on, on what was happening on the inside, what was... What was um, causing them to appear, appear like they were about to drown. Let me just say this, my sisters and brothers. It may appear like it's bad right now, but if you would just hold on to the promises of God, he said he would never leave you nor forsake. And as a matter of fact, we're going to get into some of the other promises that he has made to us in his word in Psalms 91. But for now, I just want to give you an example of what not to do. See, when they looked at the waves and they looked looked at the fact that the water was in the boat and they began to panic because they were operating in their flesh. They were operating in their limited knowledge. They were leaning to their own understanding and they assumed that Jesus did not care about them because of what was going on around them. But let me just remind you, Jesus did not leave them. Jesus was very close. He was in close proximity. He, he was there. He, he did not he did not neglect them. He did not forsake them. He was there. 
And so he said he was going to go to the other side. And guess what, my sisters and brothers? He did just what he said. But let me just say this, too. If we look at, if we look at Mark 4 and 38, because this is where the second point comes in. Don't respond like an unbeliever. Just because things are going on around you when you are victorious, you need to understand that because God said it, that settles it. So look at the 38th verse of Mark 4. It says, and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow, and they awakened him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Now listen. They had seen Jesus. They had walked with Jesus. They knew who he was. And my sisters and brothers, this is not a time for you to have despair. This is not a time for you to want to give up and throw in the towel. This is not a time for you to doubt God's power and his ability. This is a time for you to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of God. For you know your labor is not in vain. So if they really understood who Jesus was, if they were really walking in faith, it's okay to wake him up. It's how they woke him up. Do you wake God up with fear and trembling and despair because you don't know how you're going to get through this? Or do you wake him up with praise? Because he said when you enter into his presence, when you enter into his course, you enter in with praise. They should have been saying, Lord, I thank you for this wild ride, but I know we're going to the other side. But instead, they said, don't you care that we're about to die? Listen, we don't have to question God. God loves us. He demonstrated his love for us. And that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He didn't stay dead. He rose like he promised. See, God is not man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. What he say, he will bring to pass and so we stand on his word we are not going to respond like unbelievers because we have his spirit on the inside of us and I just can't wait to get to Psalms 91 but I had to go this route first because I want you to understand just because you follow the Lord does not mean that you're always making the right choices what you say matter be careful what comes out of your mouth if it's not what God says don't say it if it's not to glorify him don't do it if it's not going to give him praise and let the world know that God is still on the throne. Stop saying it, because what you say matters. The third part of, of this point is there is victory in your mouth. And we learn how to do it by watching this particular passage right here. Jesus is the greatest example we could ever have. Even when he was tempted, he said, it is written. Even when he was going through, he declared who he was and what the word of God said about him. I thank the Lord. In Mark 4, 39 and 41, it says, now listen. When Jesus saw it, and yeah, he did question their inability to have faith in him. He, he questioned, you know, what happened that you are walking in fear. My sisters and brothers, God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. And you need to understand that today. You are not defeated. You are more than a conqueror. Do you understand what that means? A conqueror destroys. A conqueror has all authority and all power. And yet you're more than that. So we praise God. In Mark 4, 39 and 41, it says, And he arose. He rebuked the winds. He said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. That's what we need to do. We need to speak to the storms in our life. We need to declare God's word in the midst of whatever you're going through. You need to understand that God put his word in you, not just for you to think about it, not for you to just hold on to it, but for you to declare and decree what God's word says. He said, I shall live and not die. He said that his, by his stripes we were already healed. He declared and decreed that. And so I'm going to say what Jesus said. I'm going to say what he said as I come to a close. I just want you to understand that even Jesus gave us an example how to handle the storms of life. You can speak to the storm. 
And if you don't believe me, I dare you to try it. I dare you in the midst of not feeling good. I dare you in the midst of symptoms. I dare you in the midst of heartaches and pain for you to just speak life to your situation today. Instead of speaking defeat, instead of speaking stress, instead of speaking what the world speaks, believers, God has equipped us. He has equipped us with the tools that we need so we don't have to live in despair. We don't have to live in lack. I know it looks like all of the water is gone, but let me just help you understand something. You got water. Hallelujah. All you got to do is take the water out the faucet and pray over it. Somebody don't hear me, though, and stop panicking like the world. I know that it looks like the toilet paper is off the shelf. I know it looks like there's no food, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg bread, because God is the God of the universe. God is our God. God is our provider. God is the only constant resource that we need, and I give him praise today. So so just like the followers of Jesus had the promise of protection, when you accept Christ, now listen, every believer, I want you to understand that this is for you. Now, if you have not accepted Christ, then you ought to do so because this is the time. This is the time, my sisters and brothers. I know you thought you had a whole lot of time. See, the world was not prepared for a pandemic. But see, the body of Christ is prepared. The body of Christ is ready. The body of Christ is on a solid foundation. So the storms of life can blow if they want to, but nothing is going to shake us off of our solid foundation because on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So I give God praise today. You want to know why I'm happy? I didn't just get saved. See, I, wasn't, I didn't just get saved yesterday. I've been walking this walk a while, and and God has been faithful for a long time. And I refuse to give up now. I refuse to turn back now. This is not the time to quit. This is not the time to question God. This is the time to draw close to him. And so we're about to go into Psalms 91 as I get ready to come to a close. Because when you accept him as your Lord, he don't want to just be your Savior. He want to connect with you. He wants you to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, under the shadows of the Almighty. When you under the shadows of the Almighty, my sisters and brothers. You have intel. You have that intel that only he will download to those who have accepted him, who know him. See, I know him by name. I know him to be El Shaddai. I know him to be the all-sufficient one. I know him to be omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent because he is God. And so in Psalms 91, if you would just go there with me real quick, I'm not going to go through the whole part, but I need you to understand what the promises of God are for you and I today. If you have not accepted him, now is the time so you can participate in this prayer of protection so that you don't have to fret, you don't have to worry, you don't have to be in despair. Look, in the secret place of the Most High, that is where you find rest. That is where you find your home. That is where you find your safety. God will protect you when you are in the secret place place of the most high and when you know who you are and when you know whose you are then you don't have a problem in the midst of a storm saying the Lord is my refuge and my fortress you don't have a problem saying he is my God and him I will trust well, what would I trust him to do? I trust him to take care of me. I trust him to protect me. I trust him to deliver me. I trust him to shield me. I trust him to lead me. I trust him to provide for me. I trust him to wash me. I trust him to cleanse me. I trust him to set me free from all of what's going on with this pandemic. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's the God that I trust. And I'm going to go a little step further this. When you know who he is, he says, surely he shall deliver me from the snares of the fowler. Not maybe, not possibly, but surely he shall deliver me from the snares of the fowler. I know he already has. See, the snares are the traps that the enemy try to set for you. A fowler is somebody who specializes in setting traps and catching things. But I want you to know he has delivered us from the snares of the fowler. This is what you need to say, my sister and brothers. Don't say what the world say. Don't
don't do like the world do, but understand you are not the world. Even though you are in the world, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. So walk in victory. It says, and he has delivered me from the noisome pestilence. Let me just say the noisome represents an odor, a foulness uh, as it relates to your senses. You can't stand the smell, the stench. And then the pestilence represents a deadly virus. That's what we're talking about today. God will deliver you from the diseases and, and, and anything that will come against you to try to destroy you. It says he will cover me with his feathers. He will cover me with his feathers. He'll put an ark of protection around about me. And he won't just do it for me. He'll do it for you because you are in Christ too. And you are under his wings too. And you can trust him underneath there because his truth shall be your shield and buckler. Let me explain the, the, uh, the buckler is a small kind of shield for close combat. His shield, his truth will be your shield and buckler. Now, a shield is, is a, a large, uh, it helps protect you from, from arrows and large rocks and boulders. So his shield will do that for you. I want you to understand when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And you can stand on it. And then he says, and thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flyeth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. He's talking about a 24-hour period, y'all. You don't have to worry. 24 hours a day, you are safe in his arms. And then lastly, lastly, and don't miss this, it says a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Make that personal today and know that God has given us everything we need. So what will you say in the midst of a storm or a tribulation? Praise be to God. Hallelujah. If you do not know him as your Lord and Savior, if you have not made the decision to trust him, to seek him, first of all, he has a plan and a purpose for your life, but you have to seek him. You have, to, you have to come to him. And I want to encourage you, when this is over, I want you to find a quiet place and talk to the God that knows all about you. Talk to the God that has promises, has greatness already in store for you. You can't get it because you don't know him. But if you come to know him today, he will give you what you need. He'll give you the clarity. He'll give you the assurance. He'll give you the confidence that you need in him to know that he is real and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek him today and understand that greatness is in you and what you say matters. Amen.